All right, so in this video, um, I'm going to just go through uh, the part of Q9, but where basically he derives what the, the this idea of the wave function is, um, or the spatial wave function. Basic idea is this. If you remember uh, back before, we tried to find um, a, an eigenvector. Um, so, so what we've been trying to find so far is basically uh, um, where uh, the the spin of an electron. So basically whether an electron has a spin up or a spin down or... Um, and, and it's been a pretty straightforward thing. We basically used our vectors, uh, our eigenvectors, use those to do this calculation. Um, uh, <clears throat> now, if you remember, there are two for any, for, for a spin, for a spin um, uh, value, uh, for a spin uh, wave function, for a spin uh, eigenfunction, there are two values, right? There's psi one, psi two. If you remember, that's because uh, um, there are only two possible values. You can basically get up or down whenever you measure a spin's um, component along a certain axis. Um, <clears throat> if you think about actually trying to find where something is, uh, so when we're trying to find something where something is, uh, we have two problems. The first one is that um, it's actually infinite in all directions. So if we're just dealing with one dimension, uh, it basically can exist from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe. Um, quantum mechanics doesn't even know that there is an end to the universe, and so it basically can exist anywhere along the line. Uh, and so it's it's infinite in that way. And so um, and the other problem is that it's it's also infinite in that um, between, let's say, the one end of the universe and the other end of the universe, there you, we can separate it into as small a point as we possibly want to. So we can divide it up into an infinite number of different pieces. And so it's the, it turns out that there's actually an infinite number of ways of finding or places to find something in a line uh, in two different ways. And so if we're actually trying to, um, to construct an eigenvector for something that just exists at one point, um, we would have to, uh, we'd have to basically set um, this, you know, let's say the x eigenvector would just have to equal uh, zeros everywhere and then have a one at the one place in space that the thing actually existed, and then zeros everywhere else. And that would be your eigenvector. And your next one, you would have another one, which would be, you know, x plus one, uh, basically the, the, the one, one state over. Um, and that would have the exact same thing, um, zero, 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 and then there'd be a one down here, zero, zero, zero. All right, and you just do that, and you'd have an infinite number of these things, and you're never going to actually be able to do this, right? So this obviously is, we're never going to be able to actually write this. Um, uh, and if you think about what we're trying to do is we're, we would then have to use those um, anytime we asked if we were in some other type of, of, of function that was just psi, um, we would have to then apply that to our eigenvector and say, hey, are you at this point right here? Um, and again, this would be an infinite number of, uh, of values that were zero except for the one place where it was actually uh, equal to one. What we're going to do instead, uh, so we're not going to do this. Um, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to define a, um, a, a thing called the wave function. And we're going to define it in such a way where it turns out that the actual probability um, of being at some point x um, is just going to be equal to the absolute value of that function's squared, so psi x squared. Um, and so that way we can just find um, the, the, we can just use this function, we can define these functions, and then the probability of finding it at that specific place will just be that, that psi x squared. And this is basically, there's a, uh, Thomas More goes through a, a fair amount of math in the first two pages of this chapter, but that's the, the main point, is that um, we're going to define this function uh, where that wave function actually tells us the probability of finding it. If we take the square of it, it tells us the probability of finding something at that point in x. Now it turns out that the actual probability of finding anything at a specific point in X is basically zero because that point again is infinitely narrow. And so what we're going to do instead is we're gonna take the number line and we're gonna actually just ask, okay, what's the probability of finding something between two points? And then, uh, then that's actually something that we can actually calculate. Um, and it turns out again, it's just going to naturally uh, do exactly what we expect it to, which is that the probability of finding it between um, x a and x b, it turns out uh, this is actually where the integral integrals come in, um, uh, where we're going to say uh, it's the integral from x a to x b um, 
of psi of x, the probability, uh, the absolute value squared dx for all uh, for, for those um, for those things. So this is how integrals work. If you remember, I uh, basically just add we're adding up the probability for all points between x a and x b, um, and that that will basically give us the probability of being between those two places. Now there's one problem if you'll see is that um, what if we make the limits so that this goes from minus infinity and this goes to infinity. Um, if you think about what's what does um, what should we get as the answer of the probability of finding um, a, a particle between minus infinity and infinity? Well, the answer is that the probability of finding it between minus infinity and infinity is one. It has to have a hundred percent probability of being found somewhere. Um, it has to exist somewhere. And so what we do is um, it turns out that, that to to make sure that that's true, we divide this by uh, the probability from uh, the, the psi of x, the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And that ensures that um, that this probability is what's called normalized, meaning that it ensures that we get a value of one, because if you put minus infinity here and plus infinity here, you just get the same integral over each other. And so you just get the probability of finding it somewhere as one. And so that's just a really quick, you know, I'm, I've taken like five pages of math that Thomas More does, but that's basically a really quick uh, understanding as to why, how we're basically going to find the probability of things and how we're going to construct uh, an actual wave function that tells us the probability of finding something in some place. And this is important because I, I don't know if you've noticed this yet, but we actually have never talked about whether or not we can even find an electron, much less, uh, you know, we have to find where it is before we do any experiments on it. And so this will help us actually calculate uh, those types of things. Uh, so that's that one. I'm going to go ahead and do another uh, video later, uh, which is going to uh, actually go through a quick, uh, a, a quick demonstration of how we would do this. Uh, so go ahead and check that one out.